What's up, dude? Oh, man. Just uh, just another weekend here in beautiful Queens, New York. You know, yeah. just... Uh, yep. So now you got... You, so <laughs> just so that everybody knows, the big black ball that's the size of his head is a microphone. And uh, I, I guess it's the Chaotica Eye. Eye exactly. Zone. The Chaotica Eyeball. So... There you go. <laughs> there's a Neumann TLM-103 right inside of that. <laughs> Give him a little VO. Give him a little VO. I've got a Neumann TLM-103. Engulfed by a Chaotica Eyeball. <laughs> going through an Avalon 737 vacuum tube preamplifier. And ultimately into my UAD Apollo quad. It's an interface of interfaces, I would say. <laughs> I'm into it. And the world was right again. <laughs> and the world was, it was right-ish. You know? <laughs> oh shit, man, it's so good. To, I'm surprised you haven't started a podcast. You're hilarious. Oh man, thank you. Dude. I'm, you know, kind of all over the place, man. I think I dip into too many different things. I mean, I know you, I, I can't, well, I can't believe you're doing a podcast. You already work like 97,000 hours a week. I don't get you. So if I could just have your energy, please, if I could, if you could just give me a little bit of that, I could probably, you know, I could probably flow through my thirties a lot, a lot easier. Spare um, some energy, sir. <laughs> can you please spare some energy? As you can see, you know, the, uh, the beauty of, of, um, of of uh, sub subleasing my recording studio is uh, getting in, you know, to an interview with G and just having it just be a pigsty, you know, it's just a mess. It's a mess in here. It's never not a mess. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and be like, yeah, my my pristine beautiful studio, but dude, you know. it's fine. Don't even sweat it. But dude, I was, that was one of the first things I thought about. Like, man, Brandon would be. Perfect if he had a podcast, man. You know oh. how fucking funny. You know how much I would tune into that. Jesus Christ, <laughs> I would love that shit. Well, thank you for helping me. Uh, you know, I got my <laughs> setup here, kind of. You know, I can maybe your, I can finagle something. I don't your know. Podcast setup, hell yeah. A little podcast hell setup, <laughs> little uh, little uh, little movement on that. Oh, little, uh, ooh, 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 <laughs> dang. <laughs> we official. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I have a full um, control room and live room here, and I was thinking of getting another one of these for the um, live room. Yeah, and nice. just getting a uh, maybe I don't know, getting an actual analog video switcher, nice. just so I can just fade between them, and then you know ha capture that as the one video source in yeah. Zoom or Twitch or you know what have you, because. Uh, from you know recent news, it looks like we have to uh, uh, kind of go get away from Facebook in oh, terms really? of our musical performances. Yeah. Oh, I um, heard that. That's so stupid. I, it's really? a lot of weird, weird news that it's just yeah. I don't That's know. That's so stupid. Like, oh, what are they saying? They're afraid it's going to turn into a music platform or something. I'm not. I'm not sure of what Mark Zuckerberg's fear is, but. Uh, I have one speculation is mm. that we're clogging up his bandwidth with small time stuff uh, during quarantine that doesn't generate him a lot of income. I see. That's my That that's is my interesting theory. because like streaming live video and audio is a is a is a large amount of data. Yeah. That's like my theory. Half an hour sets, forty five minute sets. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know, but um, that's a no, great I, theory, dude. Never thought about that. That's what I've been. It's I've been thinking about it, and I know some of my friends have been doing live stream like quarantine concerts, and they're definitely moving to Twitch uh, to yeah. do so. Yeah, um, yeah. Because it's it just seems to be, you know, supportive of of that. Yeah, supportive I think of Twitch is definitely geared more towards that end. Why yeah. not YouTube? YouTube definitely as well. Actually, uh, our friends at Google, uh, nice piece of news is that they actually um, have partnered with Navi, the National Association of Venues mm. Incorporated, I guess. Um, so we have our, you know, we have like 
this is a list of 2,800 venues throughout the country. And obviously through quarantine, we have, you know, um, through this pandemic, we've experienced a lot of permanent closures of restaurants, venues, uh, this and that. So I feel like, you know, um, actually Google stepped in and has uh, partnered with this company, Navi, to um, hopefully help keep those venues alive. Wow. A That's lot nice. of our New York City venues are on that list. So nice. You know, even ones that I, you know, even ones that I've played at that I would hate to lose. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know a couple of them shut down. One of my favorite rehearsal spots just shut down, which is sad. But this is a which tough one? time. Replay Studios. They're relatively new, but every time I went in there, it was like it was like <laughs> it was like bougie rehearsal space. It was like I loved it though. I saw I saw your videos or something from social yeah. media. That looked really nice. It's very <clears throat> nice. They maintain it extremely well. It's a little pricey. I think they were like forty an hour, as opposed to like you know twenty five or something. The sweatshop, which is a more expensive, but everything always worked. They had like a a, a camera that you could tape your rehearsals and it, you could record the mixer feed and then review it later. They were official. Never got electrocuted in there. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, so you didn't you didn't ask for the platinum package? <laughs> <coughs> the raw platinum. The raw package. the raw platinum package. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, uh, yeah, li- the whole music industry, but especially the live scene, is kind of on its head right now. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, and you're. But I mean, I see that you have some sessions here and there. I mean, mm-hmm. so do I. Uh, but you know. What do you think? It's a lot less for you these days, right? Uh, yeah, it's a lot less, but there's another factor involved. Uh, so you, at the top, you said I have like so much energy and you know I do all this shit, but I, I've cut down significantly the amount of sessions that I do, the amount of clients that I take on. Yeah, I mean that's because I can, because of like I have other jobs kind of sustaining me. Exactly. I, I only want to do shit that I would genuinely enjoy to do done with all that like other stuff just personally being selective is a good it's good when you've made it to that point where you can be selective um yeah. you know i i know that i have my you know my website and my my google my business uh you know profile i definitely have like up up the ante with my google seo a little bit and i feel like i you know I did a pretty good job to the point where I'm definitely getting phone calls at three in the morning on a Tuesday. Nice. Like, hey, can I come in the studio? And I'm just mm-hmm. like, do I even have to ask this person, when are you looking to come in? Because I already know they want to come in right now. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But you, you you're running a business. You kind of have to. Do you get that a lot? Do you get people calling you just like, hey, can I come in now? No, no. Again, uh, so I don't. I have like a little home setup, but it's not right. like for, you can only record like DI stuff basically. Right, 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 uh, right. But no, I don't get a lot of those calls. And maybe cause uh, yeah, it's not kind of the way I do it. I do get some things like, hey, could I get this tomorrow? No chance. <laughs> <laughs> like, sorry, I mean, you can go, there's thousands of engineers out there who I'm sure will do it, but uh, not me, sorry. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, I definitely have uh, some of those. I, I have very few of those. I think I just choose the people who are like a little more, you know, they just want to do things properly a step at a time. They're not in a rush to do anything. You know what I mean? Like, I, I like working with those people. Nice. Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, I, I what I can say is um, I've fallen into a, very genre specific situation. I, you know, with my own punk band and we've, we've played like, we've played adjacent to each other. I don't know if we've played a show together, but. Oh, that's a good point. I don't, I don't think we have. I, I don't we've, think, we've been in the same circles. We've definitely been in the same circles <laughs> with your metal band, Mayaxic, my punk rock band, Bedpan Fight. And I know that us playing live and you know, and people appreciating what we do live has really helped our yeah. businesses. Yeah, yeah. And I know 
for me at least, I could speak for myself, but that was a, a huge part of me getting uh, mm. music clients in here. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, what I can say is luckily <clears throat> we've built some names for ourselves before the pandemic to the point where we're still getting some people in, but you know, I'm really, I really feel for the, uh, for the 2020 graduates or 2019 graduates even, you know? Yeah. They kind of, they got out into a world that <laughs> was flipped upside down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be I thought crazy. I, I thought I had it bad. Mm. Uh, I graduated in 2010. Well, from, hold on. Uh, let's go back. So did you start as a musician? Started when? I mean, yeah, at the when? at the very beginning, I was five years old and I started piano lessons. Nice. So that is, uh, you know, unfortunately, I, I only have this, uh, you know, an electric Casio at this point. But yeah. um, I'd really love to get a, a real piano again. But... That's where I started everything. And then um, my next door neighbor uh, was the only kid. I'm from a very small town in Connecticut in the middle of the woods. So the only person I knew that played drums, like that I've ever actually even seen play drums was my next door neighbor, Mike. Uh -huh. And I was like, how did you like, how did you get into this? Like, how, what made you go buy a drum? Like, how did you do this? And he just, you know, he was into it for a while and he He's like, you're good at piano. He convinced me to buy a guitar. Nice. And we started playing like Green Day songs in his basement. Nice. And that's, that's how it started. I mean, um, and then I kind of had this thought, because like I said, we're from a small town. We don't have a lot of um, mentors. We don't have a lot of like older kids that we look up to from right. our town. So I like made up the concept of, I know there's a way that I can record us. <laughs> I was like, oh man, we can, we can record that your drums first and then I can focus on my, yeah. Wow, you figured yes. all that out? Over, kind of in a way because I didn't, I had to just go to the store and figure out like, you know, I asked the, I asked one of the, it was at Daddy's Junkie Music in Newington, Connecticut. And I got my very first, like eight track recorder that had the built-in CD burner. You remember those? Uh, no, I never used them. Oh man, um, that was like my very first, you know, my first foray into the into the world here. Wow. But yeah, it had internal effects. It, this little dial pad thing. It had internal nice. effects. You can add some weird delay or reverb to your vocals. Oh, and I'm talking like I recorded in my grandmother's basement with like. You know, vocals through like a Rode NT1 that was like thrown over a, a rafter. It was like, <laughs> I didn't have mic stands. Like it was, it was janky. Wow. It was, yeah. And that's how I started it all. Like just by messing around with my neighbor, then I just took it, you know, just kind of messed around on my own. And then coming to New York, I knew that I wanted to be in a band, you know, because I'm from Connecticut. I'm not from here. I'm, I'm, when did I've you... been here 10 years. Yeah, when did you come to New York? 2010? Uh, 2009. Nine. And then I, I finished college here. I, I transferred in to, uh, to NYU. Mm -hmm. And then I finished college and then just never left. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. You came to Brooklyn, that apartment? I came to Brooklyn. Funny, so funny enough, on this very day, I'm going to see, <clears throat> for his birthday, one of my first roommates after college uh, a long time ago. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, they were just, uh, I lived with a couple of older kids that did uh, music degrees at NYU also. Nice. And I just, I just met them through working in, in uh, you know, NYU Stern IT department. All right. During college. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it just, and I just kept, I just kept it moving and I, I wanted to, you know, I knew I wanted to play in a band. Right. And I found my footing with that. I was in a jam band, and then I was in a soul rock band. Oh, I was shit. in, yeah, like as a guitar uh, just, player. No, um, uh, keyboard. <clears throat> nice, dude. So you're actually pretty good at uh, piano, like decent. I I'm okay. I yeah. mean, I'm I can say I'm rusty now. Uh, no, but I def do you think that the piano is one of the more important instruments to learn? I think so. Honestly, yeah. <clears throat> honestly, it's because of the 
linearity yeah. of it's just it's it just feels it, it just feels kind of one to one when you yeah. look at it it's like you have your chromatic scale laid out in front of you from left to right 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 and if you think about it there's other instruments you can play that's not necessarily like that yeah you know violin Guitar, flute yeah. like it, they're that's it's um you know they're worlds apart in yeah. terms of in terms of their layout mm-hmm. um i just feel like if you can get your <clears throat> if you can get you know your your fingers on top of a piano and you can really really go for it i feel like you can learn any other instrument from that nice. um, especially because we have 10 digits so you're able to do 10 voices on the piano right Right. On a violin, maybe you could do two or three or whatever, like right. Yeah. But you could do you could do ten notes at one time on the piano, right. or more. You can cluster them together with your thumbs. I've seen crazy pieces of music where, <laughs> where you like cluster your hands together. Um, yeah, there's something but, about piano that that's that actually never thought about it like that. There is like a like a a, a, a linear progression up, it, and which is the basis of the Western scale yeah exactly oh, shit, dude. That's yeah amazing. you like it's like it's like it's laid out in front of you and you can if you can think of you know if you can if you have at least kind of relative pitch yeah. right then you can hit a note and then you you can hear where it is and it's visually and it's like even the length yeah from that note you can kind of visualize that length and you can start to feel how far apart your fingers are for that yeah, yeah, yeah. for that next voicing and it's just it's a nice way to i think to introduce anyone to music especially if you start learning young mm. you know you develop um you develop these certain skill sets early then you know you're going to be more likely to be able to pick up other instruments down the road yeah i think it also feeds into being a good engineer i don't know why but like and well, this is not to say that people who don't know piano are not good engineers. Precisely, and I can <laughs> say that I knew you're, I see where you're going with this, and yes, I have. I'm I, you know, I felt down before. You know, I felt down and out with this studio business situation. It's like you know, <clears throat> I felt there was times where I was like, yeah, I think I'm gonna pack it up, you know. But honestly, um, I feel like there's you know. There's a moment, <clears throat> there's some moment that happens where you know that you're just going to keep going. Um, I can't, I can't always, I can't even like give you an example, but you know, I feel like, uh, I feel like piano has definitely helped with shaping the way that I'm able to work with bands and other musicians, regardless of the genre. <clears throat> but to your point, um, I know a lot of engineers that are super impressed by my musical abilities to playing and, you know, pat myself on the back, uh, feeling down and out just maybe some months before and then getting reassured by Mm -hmm. an engineer 10 years older than me. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you recorded this in here? Oh shit, you mixed it? Oh shit, okay. You know, that's, that's a great feeling and that, you know, we need more of that, I feel like we, you know, and you, you're wonderful at that. You know, you pick everybody up. I mean, look, look at your. I mean, what would I be doing right now <laughs> if I didn't have it? If I didn't have a Jeet interview, you know, a Jeet Jeet interview. <laughs> oh, Jeet wow! Interview. Look at that. No, man. I mean, I, I do agree that there has to be like a lot of positivity spread out because um, it it's a competitive business and it's easy to it's easy to fall into the trap of like, oh, I have to get it or I have to not let other people get it so I can get it. So one of those, right. right. What is, is that crab mentality? Just like pulling everybody down. No, it's no, it's great. I mean, yeah. So so. that's the thing. Like, I think we need more of like, you know, supportive, more supportive, uh, more supportive community. But that dude, I, I don't know if that's something that I learned by myself or something that like the Brooklyn rock scene, everybody was helping each other out. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a, there's a wonderful sense of community um, kind of wherever you turn in this local, local music scene. There's a lot of us. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of us around here. There's a lot of bands, you know, 
Um, obviously, probably a little less now. Yeah. yeah. Um, unfortunately, my own band, <clears throat> you know, my own band is, it's taken them a while to come back and get back together and, and practice again. And yeah. Yeah. I just, I feel like we have, um, you know, I feel like we have more or that, you know, more that we can do at this point with this camera, this fancy like camera, you know, and I can, I could, I could do a whole like live stream concert yeah. experience. Yeah. If only I can get my band. <laughs> get your man? My your band. band? Yeah, yeah, oh, you could, right? Um, mm. But yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't blame anybody for, you know, you know, for But being... also you can't wait on other people, right? No, no, I, and <clears throat> no, I know. I, I totally understand that um, as well. And I have, I have allowed myself to wait, you know, for too long sometimes. And I realize that, and that's a big reason why I, I have this whole room thing to myself. And, you know, cause sometimes you just gotta take the bull by the horns and just do it yourself. If you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. Kind of, kind of a mentality because mm-hmm. I try to, you know, you know, Oh, I graduate. Like I was saying, I graduated at the exact wrong time. I feel like I feel like I feel for these kids graduating right now and trying yeah. to get jobs, audio jobs especially. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But um, you know, uh, I graduated in 2010 in the middle of a recession. When I thought after college, after an NYU degree, I'd have uh, you know a perfect end to just jobs get into lining one of those, up for you. Yeah. Yeah. One of those big rooms in Manhattan. But again, that is why, and I couldn't get. I couldn't get anything like that. I worked in a little post-production studio, but not that big, you know, the big dream console, like a 4000 series SSL and doing, you know, music sessions. That's not what I was doing at all. Mm -hmm. But, you know, through those experiences, I was able to learn about VO stuff. And that's why I've, you know, I've like narrated a bunch of audio books and I've gotten into that world. And, you know, without, without those experiences that, that never would have happened. And then, you know, and like I said, taking the bull by the horns, this is uh, this is all my. I had to out of necessity. I had to build my own company <clears throat> because it's just um, not worth being here to me. If I came here for a reason, and then yeah, wasn't able to do it. Here I am. You know, I'm, yeah, I'm still no, doing it. It's it's ballsy as hell to start your own thing, your own and your have your own space, have a business, have a whatever it is, S corp or C corp or what are, whatever the other ones are it's ballsy as hell because now you have to make it work <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah and it's in this is an s corp and since it's my it's just me mm-hmm. um that's a good that's a good route to take if you're going to start uh an audio business an s corp because it protects you against uh double taxation mm-hmm. so your actual you have a separate you know, you have an SSN, social security number, and then you have an EIN, an employer identification number, when you start a corporation, basically, mm-hmm. which is, it's just a small one person corporation in this case. I farm a little bit of work out to one guy for audiobook editing, um, this other stuff, but it's pretty much, it's just me. But it's, um, you're right, it kind of forces me to do it in a way. Yeah, and, um, and pressure isn't bad. Sometimes, Pressure can help, you know, some sort of struggle will help you push uh, to get to where you want to be. But like, what? when did you decide to move to an S Corp? Because I remember you were just doing it on your own for a long time, right? You I, had your little studio in, uh, had your little setup in your bedroom. Oh, we got to talk about that, baby. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I've definitely come up, let's just yes. say that. <laughs> so wait, when did you, yeah, so you were at it, you came to NY... Uh, New York mm-hmm. for NYU and then mm-hmm. you move into this Brooklyn apartment yeah uh, and then when was the idea of like I want a vocal booth in my fucking, <laughs> my fucking you, bedroom you know it's you know what's funny is okay so that that bedroom uh, where you were with the vocal booth in it I actually lived in a in a different place previous to that so I had a place for about three years before I moved into there ah, okay. after college it was the smallest bedroom you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> um, I, it was an eight by eight bedroom. 
and I still put my queen size bed in it. <laughs> so it was a very, it was such a New York thing. It was, you could open, just you could just open the door. That's like, that's how much space there was in there. Like I had a little, a little like desk, upright desk thing, and then just a small like armoire, yeah. and that's it on either wall, and then just that that's all that could fit. Completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I started my business and came up with the idea for at least the name and kind of the concept of what I'd be offering while I was in that room. Oh, and interesting. Funny enough, I did. I want to say, just from memory. It was two major sessions that I remember that I did in that room. I, <laughs> this poor guy, man. No, hey, they, they were happy with it. <laughs> but I recorded this guy's, this guy's guitar was on my bed. <laughs> wow. Like, there's no other room. <laughs> the guy's guitar was on my bed. The guitar I, like, amp. The amp, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. The guitar amp, and I enclosed it. In something, I like did something. I don't even know. I made a cave. <laughs> I made like a weird little cave out of it. It came out. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. But no, I. That was the very, very first. And then I moved to the place you were familiar with, and um, I had the pleasure of meeting a young lady named Freya Wilcox. Do you know her? Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. No. Um, she, she is, uh, she definitely blew up in the, in the Brooklyn music scene here. She's from Australia, has the voice of Janis Joplin. Oh, nice. Um, and, uh, you know, she came to me wanting to record just an acoustic vocal, acoustic and vocal, a little like demo, basically demo EP. And it came out really nice and it was just <laughs> out in the open. It was an, I had in my new bedroom, I had an iMac, an Mbox 2 and a Rode NT1 microphone. Hells yeah. That That's it. And that's all I had. I, I actually really did start with that. Like, you know. Wow. Which is funny. Because <clears throat> I, I built it all up from, from that point. And she, you know, she gave me the, she gave me the honor of, of recording her first demo that she actually went on to use to find the rest of her band. And then wow. she, you know, she blew up beyond beyond what my band was Dude, that's <laughs> since amazing. then and yeah and i mean from there i i kept it going and um like what was you know, the next I, big uh, investment i knew that i needed i knew that i needed a place to track everything but drums yeah 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 so it was like what you have currently in your spot where it's like you know you could track whatever you want but the super la- like the super right. noisy stuff. Right. And what was funny is I had um I mean the big purchase was getting the Apollo quad. Mm. <clears throat> it was like night and day. I mean getting getting that interface back in I got this in 2014. I think September 2014. So I've actually been using it for 6 years now. Wow. Um and that was a big moment because I just, it was like, it was like something clicked and I was like, oh, you really do get what you pay for in audio Mm. gear. You really do. Um, And whether or not it depreciates in value is, I think based on whether it's a good product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, as long as you maintain it, obviously if it still works, then if it still works the way it did. Um, But yeah, man, I'm like, the booth. It was the booth. That was that was the funny. I know you wanted me to get to the booth, man. Hell's I know yeah, that's what man. I know that's I what you want me. I love that shit. I had just the most beautiful, ugly, <laughs> just nasty wooden box. <laughs> it was just a disgusting wooden box. I loved it. Um, we called it the sweat box. <laughs> uh, for obvious reasons. I mean, don't do you know. Don't do a July or August session in a in a in a wooden vocal booth. Just don't, you know. Uh, no ventilation, just wooden enclosure, kind of sucks. 
Um, I totally had the AC, like the window unit, like going in the room. But that was, I mean, whatever. That that didn't do anything for the person in the booth. No way. Um, but yeah, so <sighs> fun. Um, uh, yeah, Dude. I. You made that. You made that thing by yourself. You had like a little tie line. You had your panels. You had your foam. Hell yeah. I, it was awesome. I cannot take credit for that. I did not uh, make it. Really? I didn't make that myself. No. I I found... <laughs> I, I have to... Yes. I have to think. Yep. I remember. <laughs> I found a company in the Bronx. Uh-huh. It must have been just a private, it must have been just a guy in his apartment. Yeah, yeah, of course. And just he, like how he, you were doing it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he was building these things. But then actually, come to find out, when I called him, I called him back, he had he had expanded. So mm. he need, so he was prefabricating these, you know, like you kind of custom you custom design the way you want it. Mm-hmm. This guy, it was called Radiate World, (laughs) R-A-8-8. Nice. And I was like, this guy's official. That's awesome. (laughs) Radiate. Dude, that's badass. Radiate. Radiate. Um, Yeah, shout out to that guy. Um, Yeah. Yeah, he just, he gave me this booth that I got just a lot of, it was just, you know, it's definitely good for the definitely good for the pictures and definitely definitely um was incredible because it it warmed people up mm-hmm. for sure because you do get warm in that box the the hot box the sweat box whatever you want to call it but yeah um you know say say what you will it it did get you know it did get warm in there but it's pretty good for a vocal performance too yes. i got to say yes um so it actually worked out, um, and it was like it became a thing. It became like, you know, other other artists that would come and record their vocals in there. They would post about it, like I'm going in the hot box now. You know, <laughs> like it became like a, a staple of the of of the you know DIY audio engineering world at Dude, the time. I, loved I think it. I loved the hot it. Box. And like the vocals were clean. That's all everybody wanted. They didn't want to go to a big studio. They just wanted somewhere where they could get clean vocals that was yeah. affordable, and you provided it. And that's and that the beauty of it is that's all. I mean, sometimes you're paying for a lot of aesthetic yeah. aesthetics when you know you're, you know, because you know, and you know too. It's like yeah. this is what we need. Yeah. Oh, this microphone I'm speaking into. This is the one that you sang into. No way. Same oh yeah, it's a TLM. One. That's the one, baby. That's the one. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Oh, dude, you have to do your own podcast. I would watch that religiously. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Well, thanks for helping me with the setup because now I feel, uh, <laughs> you know, I feel confident that I can just get it going, you know? Dude, no, here's the cool thing, right? If you start your own podcast, guess who you have to wait on? Nobody. You just do it yourself. <laughs> you hey, that's true. Oh, you saying just me just actually just talking and dicking around into the mic? Okay, I, I guess if you wanted to have guests, you would have to rely on their schedules too. That's true. Well, but, you know, that's, that could be fine. I mean... Dude, you could do your own show. Come on. <laughs> you could do it on your own. You got so many voices in there. I'll just sit here and talk to myself like, hey, guys, I'm fine. I'm fine today. I'm fine. Are you fine? I'm good. What's cracking? (laughs) What's popping? See? See? There you go. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We could do this. We could do this. We could do this. We could do this. Okay, maybe you, uh, no. I you could either have a guest <laughs> on, or you're you like could, no. <laughs> you're like take that. I take that back. Forget it. Don't do that. Yeah, no. I can see because like I the reason I have one person on is because I could never just talk by myself. It's very difficult for me to talk by myself. So yeah, you should yeah you should do like a, a podcast. Wait, how could we do? You should, we got to do something. You got to start your podcast, bro. All you right. should do it uh, for punk bands like DIY Brooklyn rock bands and then flittily flay i have a studio if you want to come and <laughs> flittily flay with twiddly d twiddly d come to queens and work with me <laughs> there you go 
Oh, oh my dude. God. Yes. You yes. could promote local bands. You could sh- you could kind of broadcast the heart of Brooklyn, the DIY punk scene. Hells yeah. You'd have your Hells own theme yeah. song. You could have your own promo guy in a world. <laughs> in a world. Don't mind me. I'm going to take a picture of your beautiful face. Oh, my God. Look at you. Uh, Dude, I probably look like a j- Mm. Um, mm, mm, mm. You should, dude. Uh, you totally should. You think so? Hell yeah. Okay, you don't have to do it on Zoom like this. Like, if fans are willing to come in, yeah, no, fuck yeah. Dude, Zoom, no, I mean, you know, just as, just as well if, you know, this whole, like, this whole virtual world that we've fallen into now, mm-hmm. I really feel like now we do, out of any other time, have more of an opportunity to actually speak with people in their own space Mm. because when we're all together it is good by the way like i miss you know i miss general human interaction not that not that we haven't been you know safely interacting with who we do um but it's not the same as before it's absolutely not you know but i think zoom is giving us you know being that it's a platform in and of itself, but Zoom gives us a platform to speak uh, to people in their own in their own spaces in their own like while they're in their comfortable you know space. Whether you know, I you know I got to spend an entire almost you know six months now without having to wear a shirt and tie for my full time <laughs> job. So that's been cool. That's been good. Right. Right. Yeah. It's a great job though, AV Tech, you know. And I know your how's your uh, how's your Criterion? It's awesome. Collection going. I love yeah. that. Yeah, I love that place. They uh, more than anything, uh, I love being just the audio guy that uh, is in the corner, just like you know, kind of just doing his thing, and nobody knows what it is. Um, That's great. And like, I have a good uh, set of audio people in the team. I have an awesome supervisor who is uh, insistent that after 4 30 or 5 o'clock like cut it off like he doesn't want anybody to burn out which is his big thing which is he hasn't said that but you know i've like texted him at like 4 30 or 5 like hey i'm ready for a new piece and he's like no go go do something else <laughs> i'm like fantastic okay. yeah so dude i mean i would rather again it kind of comes back to the mentality of like can i just fill my time with things that i enjoy i mean you said that i have so much energy it's because everything i do i just enjoy doing it and if you enjoy everything you do, of course you make time for it. Of course you like put out the energy for it, you know? Absolutely. I mean, I have, um, you know, I do have a, a desire to reach a sort of next level that I feel like I'm not, um, I'm not quite grasping at, mm. um, I don't know. Have you ever felt that way that you're like pl- you've plateaued in your skill set in one way or another? Absolutely. And the Criterion thing was one way to kind of shift it because like I'd never done uh, restoration work. So I suddenly mm. had to like learn all this new shit. And like I didn't know some things about Pro Tools that they told me. I'm like, oh, shit. How did I not know that I've been doing it for so long? <laughs> you know? Like what? Like what? What's an example? Just like just like stupid things, like really, really stupid things. I'm trying to think of a, an easy example that could be relatable to people out there. Um, OK, this is really stupid, but you can map your uh, track outputs to more than one uh, one uh, channel. So like when, when you're when I'm listening to things in mono, they've told me like don't just take a mono track and then output one and two. You've got to output on output one, and then you press um, control, and then you output again on output two, and then it's actually true mono because both the signal is going to both. Oh. Yeah. Oh, and it's like three dB louder than if it was just output one and two because that's you know subtracts it by three dude shit like that like oh my god i didn't know that like stupid things like that (laughs) it's amazing man it's um and then as far as um band stuff goes yeah i one thing the reason why i'm having Raisha, hey Raisha, uh on this song is because i feel like i wanted to push it in terms of like production so i'm doing a song with her 
just to like, oh nice yeah just to push it man i feel like i don't want to get um i don't want to get stale and forget how to produce a good squiddledy rock song squiddly ding dong <laughs> not trying to get ru- not not trying to get rusty in here yeah but, but what, when did you uh i mean i think we always have those moments right always isn't that <clears throat> always a thing like we always feel like we could be better and not good enough and stuff like that um yeah i mean no you hey you're right you're right hey it's like yeah it's not a it's not a um it's not a feeling that's exclusive to to what we do it's true Mm -hmm. but you know it's like whenever i whenever i start to doubt myself let's say um just know that like you know some like that's the moment when something comes out of the woodworks for you Mm. and just to keep pushing on is like you know i've i've realized that um you know the way the way people get work in what we do is already different since Mm -hmm. we finished college yeah yeah you know and it's like yeah i i consider i consider us to be very lucky actually yeah Yeah. really happy really happy that i'm still you know i'm happy that you still have your regular job too and i mean i can't believe you're (laughs) now folks when we say working from home this jeet character right here works ninety three thousand hours per week no who's telling you (laughs) i know you do I remember you and Raisha called me at like eleven o'clock as I was finishing up. <laughs> and you, guys, you guys said the same thing. It's like who's spreading these rumors around? <laughs> it's like, hey, how <laughs> do you ever sleep, dude? Yes, of wondering. course I sleep. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm just wondering, man. I don't know. <laughs> like, you just think wondering. I'm a, think I'm a robot? Like just nonstop. Yeah. <laughs> I do. No, I, dude. I really think it's like. It's like if you if you um, if you have a bunch of things that you really are passionate about and you love them and it's not like passionate and with no return like I'm actually getting like you know I'm able to like live co- fairly comfortably and you know if you have all those things in place I think it just becomes a lot easier and you don't you don't really uh, at least I don't feel stressed out I think a lot of people have worried about me like do you ever just like sleep or spend time to yourself. I said, yes, of course I do. What, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's, <sighs> there's something that I'm putting out that's giving the impression that I work nonstop, which is not true. I work a lot, but I definitely, I, dude, I was just playing Horizon Zero Dawn last night. Like, come on. <laughs> you were, so how was that? I liked it. I liked the game a lot. Oh, well, a lot isn't strong. I, I really enjoy the game. Let's say that. All right. All right. I'm trying to get, you know, I'm, I try to get into games again. Like, I, I don't know. I'm playing Resident Evil, the nice. very first, the remake nice. of the very first one right now. Nice. You like it? Yeah. I mean, we're just going over and, you know, at, at uh, SAE where <laughs> we are common, common boys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, you know, I'm I'm a TA for for uh, for John, and he's going over video game audio Dude. Uh, last week. Nice. So, and he mentioned Hellblade. Hmm. Do you know Hellblade? It sounds familiar. Video now game. that is that's some like 360 audio right there. Really? Yeah. If you play it with headphones, um, basically uh, she hears voices in her head, and they come from all directions. It's like really binaural cool. stuff. Yeah, very Dude, cool stuff. Dude, I love it. Have you done any uh, 3D audio stuff? Like, no, I I'm haven't. Very curious about it. So there I you go. There's another skill that we need to like kind of figure out because it's coming. It's coming. Definitely. I've I've seen job descriptions um, for such things. Uh, I was also lucky enough to get just. I always keep myself out there. Uh, indeed.com, linkedin.com. I always keep my stuff updated um, and I always have the button selected. Yes, I'd like recruiters to contact me. 
And uh, I lucked out one day and got a job at Google. Fuck yeah. Dude. As an audio analyst. Wow. So there are some weird little jobs out there that you would never, ever think of. I know you go to college for audio engineering. You're most likely want, you most likely want to be a music producer. Right. That's probably 90% plus, you know, the oh, case. Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'd say 99.999. 99.999. And I'm telling you, dude, and like, yeah. It's, yeah, go ahead. The amount of jobs out there. I mean, like, what are some of the jobs that, like, you never knew? Because I know, like, restoration, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, and that's really cool. I mean, like, I'm sure we, I mean, we knew restoration was a thing, but, like, oh, dude, who, I didn't. Who, who knew you could, you had a whole vault of, you know, old stuff to, to restore? That's fantastic. A full-time job doing that. Like, mm -hmm. there, there are jobs, um, there are jobs tuning the audio devices used in in cars like the voice activation there's jobs in detroit where you are basically an audio engineer tuning tuning the aspects of the car like wow. and and you know you can yeah it's it, it's kind of insane and even what even uh, like what you were saying like getting into weird like just little niche things like for instance the the um the google job i had was um trying to improve overall improve the audio quality of a voice over ip system mm -hmm. which this zoom call that we're doing right now yeah. is an example of that except this has a video feed also right right dude so many things that you would not think are jobs out there mm -hmm. like they're they audio engineers are definitely essential to uh business as a yeah. whole but like i even think zoom um, even right. zoom sorry. yeah yeah zoom, even zoom, zoom that we're that we're using right now there are audio engineers on that team <laughs> yeah probably listening in hacking into wow. like, who the fuck are these guys you could probably even start in a company like that doing quality control qc mm. work qc or qa that's how i started at audible.com Oh yeah, quality about that. assurance, and then quality assurance. You just you get in at the the ground floor, you get in at the very bottom of these companies, and you can get in there. You start. You usually quality control like, you know, there's probably a quality control manager, and then you're under them, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you can find yourself in a position to get taken upstairs and introduced to the people in the studios because you name drop somebody you worked for in the past. Yeah. That's another yeah. thing I do. That that yeah. worked out. That yeah. really worked out. And um <clears throat> so even at Zoom, um I'm sure, you know, there's call logs, there's they have yeah. for data purposes and <laughs> um, you know, whatever sure. whatever they have to look through. Right. Whatever talk, data talk, they have to talk scrape about uh, Audible. Like you started as a QA, right? Yep. And then how um, did you move up to uh, actually doing VO work for them? So prior to working at Audible at all, I worked for this little um, this little boutique audio post production studio in Manhattan called Onomatopoeia, and basically I name dropped. The, so during that job, actually, I got to work on some Broadway shows, like some DVD releases of Broadway shows. Nice. <clears throat> um, so that involved me actually going to like Lincoln Center, uh, collecting the hard drives mm -hmm. from this mobile mobile recording truck that came and just did a Maddie patch. Mm -hmm. They did a Maddie connection mm -hmm. to the outside of the building. It was incredible. They had ninety six channels just from one cable it's amazing. just from a truck and they had two synchronous pro tool systems in the truck one real and one backup backup you know? jeez official yeah. yeah three glyph drives per system so it's six glyph drives and yeah just really to really make sure <laughs> wow. and and um my job was to i was there i went to the show and then right after the show, I booked it outside before the whole crowd was going out. And then uh, just get to the truck and grabbed all six of those drives and, and cabbed them down to the studio. And I edited them. I, I did uh -huh. a lot of audio editing. That's, 
you could start getting into some tedious, you know, when you start, when you get your foot in the door, you're probably going to be given some tedious work. Yes. But um, anyway, that job ended, um, you know, unceremoniously, let's say. Uh, but I found a job at audible.com and it was just quality assurance. But I had a feeling that I could move kind of quickly mm -hmm. over there because I had already been um, recording voice actors in nice. a studio uh, to doing various uh, like educational things and <clears throat> even did an audio dictionary, audio science dictionary at one point over there, wow. um, which is very tedious, obviously it sounds, right? Um, but so from that, I just, you know, I made sure I let them all know that I used to work for Matt Kaplowitz at Onomatopoeia and boom. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I know him. I'm like, yeah, can I can I move up to here? He's like, sure, and it was just as simple as that. Uh, I don't wow. know, I mean, it. I could have just never mentioned where I worked before, I could, you know, and that kind of goes to show also that you can work for a company and people don't know what your resume looks like. Mm -hmm. Even though you like, send it in. <laughs> even though you sent it to them, even though they have it, and then they hired you. So I basically reminded this guy, I mean, no, it's a big company, there's no way he would have known anyway. Right. So it's not, you know, it, it's not a weird practice to, just to make sure, you know, make sure people know if you, if you feel that you're qualified for this position upstairs or whatever, let them know why. Yes, yes. You know? And I, as a 22-year-old or 23-year-old, doubled my pay right there. Dude. Because it was just quality control was like, you know, that was like the entry-level entry, entry level job. And then I went right for, the, right for the, the, the contracting work upstairs that's like, you know, that yeah. people, come from, people come from pretty far away to go there. Yeah, you know, dude, no, that's, that is an extremely important point. Like, even if you get hired for a company, like, yeah. one, uh, people usually don't retain everything on your resume. And yeah. two, they're not going to care enough to go back to your resume. No. They don't have time. Like, I mean, it's just you have to run a yeah. business. You don't have time yeah. to be worried about everybody. So you have and to speak up for yourself. Yeah, exactly. You're already there. You're already in there. They're, they're not thinking about your your yeah. motion through the company. Like they're not thinking about you, you know, ne not necessarily, unless you're really going above and beyond in some crazy way. Yeah, they're not but there yeah. to babysit you. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, um, but sorry to answer your question, I, me working there had nothing to do with me starting to narrate. I actually left that job. Okay, no, not left. So I got a story for that. I got a story for you about that. Really? Um, I got I got laid off. Um, I got laid off from Audible because of me letting a narrator mispronounce a word so many times in a book. Uh, that word was uh, Q U A Y. Q U A Y. Quay quay. Yeah. Quay? So he said he said quay. And I thought it was right, and so did he, but it's key. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. So that is, that word, that single four-letter <laughs> word is the reason that I lost my job at audible.com. Dude, that's crazy. But that it was fine, because then I found an audiobook uh, production um, department in this larger company called Do Art Film and Video. Uh -huh. And then I was there for three and a half years, and that is where I actually submitted my, you know, I was there, and I was there full time, you know, in Manhattan for yeah. three and a half years. I definitely listened to some freaking audiobooks during that time. Mm. Let's just say, a lot. So <laughs> I, you know, I asked my bosses, I was like, you know, actually, the reason that I asked my bosses if I could uh, audition was because I had gone through so many corrections of putting the, I can't remember that word, but it's also not just one instance. But I remember thinking to myself, I learned this word in middle school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and this, and these narrators come to find out they get paid the big bucks. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So I said, you know what? I asked my bosses, I said, can I, can I audition? And they just basically said, nah, you're gonna suck. Mm-hmm. Like they were very jokey. That's mm-hmm. just how they are. But I impressed them. They tried to blast my, um, my audition for the whole office to hear, <laughs> thinking that it would embarrass me. But they were like, that's not you. But I'm it like, was. I'm like, just, it's not even your choice, dude. Just submit it. <laughs> and Look at that. And then a week later, he's like, oh, Brandon, uh, you know, you're, you're accepted for fiction and nonfiction for the Library of Congress. Wow. You know, cool. Fantastic. Um, so I just took it from there and, and um, I did just a handful for them and then found, and then actually, you know, that's the point where I valued myself more at that company. If I was doing the audio engineering work and the work on the other side of the glass too, I realized that the raise, the Mm -hmm. simple raise that I had asked for after being there two years and I still wasn't getting it for like a year and a half or something, I moved into the AV, into the corporate world Mm -hmm. of audio visual technician, you know, job. So I feel like um, I couldn't get them to, you know, I, I actually tried to renegotiate a salary to the point where I said, listen, don't pay me for, don't pay me straight up for the books, but give me one book a month to do, to narrate. And I'll do that plus whatever editing and mastering. Mm -hmm. Cause I wanted to like switch it up a lot. Mm-hmm. I wanted to see if they would pay me a salary to be a narrator in the booth sometimes mm-hmm. and then edit and master like and so I could really kind of dig into every little aspect of that yeah. company. Um you know, they didn't want to give me a raise and I kind of realized that you know, um in the corporate AV world, we're not necessarily using our audio engineering skills as much as our technical skills, just general technical skills. But I kind of, um, I kind of realized that I would like to expand my, my own horizons a mm-hmm. little bit and kind of figure out how, how to do some like video stuff, you know, like AV, it says it in the name, audio yeah. visual. And, um, I think it was really, um, I think it was really special to um, be able to kind of stick to what I was already doing anyway, Mm -hmm. because I had started narrating, right? So I didn't lose audiobooks. I left the full-time job for a job that paid almost 150% of that. Yeah. And then was still doing a little bit of narrating, you know, audiobooks like on the side anyway. Yeah. And then, you know, during that time, that's when I was building up a lot of this gear that I have here, um, and then you know bringing in, starting to bring in more and more bands um, as I as I had. I even remember uh, I remember receiving some of these preamps right here. Um, I had them shipped to that company, Duart, in Manhattan because I was really sketched out about having this stuff like shipped to my stoop yeah, yeah, in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. you know so. Um, I remember opening it there and showing showing my coworkers. You know, <laughs> I got the, oh Rupert Nee five eleven, oh, sick, <laughs> fucking sick. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, uh, it was it was a an interesting move because the thing is that corporate AV you can find jobs that pay a lot actually, but they're kind of volatile Mm. in a way, a little bit. You definitely have to find the right personalities to work with in in that. Um, Unfortunately, I've had had jobs I've lost in AV simply because my boss thought I, thought I disrespected him in some way. Like I, I think I was, I think maybe I was just out of it or something Mm. and he thought I, like, 
was being insubordinate and not listening to him or something or, or something like that. Yeah, corp- and it totally corporate was, world's yeah. a little different for sure. It is, it is. But yeah. you know, um, I've landed in a pretty cool place. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doing corporate AV right now. As I mean, as we speak, not now. It's Saturday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, no. I'm just, I'm, I'm running webinars, nice. panel discussions, like on Zoom. Here we are. Really. I'm doing all Zoom all the time. Lots wow. of Zoom. Okay, so wait, so what do you do next? So you do AV work for uh, the I guess... the Ford Foundation. Jesus Christ, dude, that's a center for so- center for social justice. Jesus, which is uh you know in this in this day and age and uh, <laughs> everything that's happening around us, it's it, it's a pretty cool place to work right now. I understand. Uh, I understand. <laughs> so wait, you're is. doing that? You're doing? Uh, you have your narrator stuff still? See, the narrator stuff is like, those those projects are very few and far between. But that's um, right now because of what's going on. No. Um, mm. Actually, well, funny enough, I actually, I did do two. I did mm. two of them during during quarantine time. So I shouldn't be so quick to say that, but the quality of them was just so so bad that I don't really count them. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't I don't count those. <laughs> okay. Uh unfortunately but you're still getting them. You're still getting them. Sometimes, yeah. You okay. know, unfortunately, um you know, the thing about Amazon is that um your Amazon has given the general public the ability to just self-publish books that they've written themselves. Interesting. Which is not that. always a not always a pretty thing. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like uh, YouTube. It's not always. It's it's yeah. It, exactly. So obviously you have extreme variations in quality. Yeah, right? yeah. So <clears throat> that's these very last, interesting. These it's... last couple of books that I narrated were clearly written in Italian, and then just, <laughs> and then just like <laughs> thrown through a Google Translate. Thro- Thrown through a Google Translate, I swear, I swear, oh, it was God. clearly written in Italian. Yeah, it was. Um, there was lots of, uh, I don't know, whatever. Not it was, a lot of quality <laughs> control on that end, I guess. No, zero, zero <laughs> copy editing, nothing. So that's why I'm not. Uh, that's why I didn't say yes just but, now. <laughs> but uh, it's still on the table, right? Yeah, it's still yeah. something that I actually, I just did, well, I just did an audition. Um, I was asked to do an audition. I didn't get this one. Actually, there were two from that company. That might have been all, th- that might have been both this year as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like, yeah, um, definitely side side. But also, unfortunately, in this uh, in this building here where my studio is, I'm not able to narrate in here because, i would need to take i would need mm-hmm. to take this to my bedroom my current bedroom in ridgewood yeah. because um there's too many drum kits adjacent to my to my space here and it's just it's just a real kick in the balls when you yeah. come here to do some quiet work and then you can't control that you can't right. control when other people are here and it's just like ah so luckily i have the little apollo you know twin duo nice you know, at home, and I just have an XLR cable dangling out of there, and I just put Perfect. this bad boy in my backpack. That's it. How do you feel about the Chaotica? You like it, right? It works pretty well. I like it. Um, I kind of double down. It? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, mm-hmm. um, I feel like I because I, I also double down. I put this in my booth, mm, so interesting. I don't really have a need for the. The thing is, it's like. Yes, the reflections are gone, but but you're not. Um, I mean, not not fully gone if you're if if you're yelling, right? You can you can still hear a little bit of reflections, but you're definitely not going to get rid of like bass or drums from three 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 rooms down. Mm-hmm. You know, my my booth is also on casters. It's on wheels. Oh wow! So I did a lot of things to try to eliminate some sound, but. Um, 
Yeah. I thought about buying the Chaotica, but like, I mean, I, I don't have any kind of sound paneling or anything. I don't do that. I just like, I don't even know if I, it would be worth buying it if I'm just going to put it in an open room, which is fairly quiet because I got carpet. Carpet kind of absorbs stuff, but I just thought, fuck it. I'll just record stuff at vocals at the studio. That's why I haven't bought it yet. Yeah. I mean, I'd say, I mean, I'd say it's, you know, they're, I mean, you don't have to buy this. They do have knockoffs now. Mm-hmm. And they're only like 30, 40 bucks. I would be interested if you were to get one of those knockoffs. We just do like a comparison. Yeah. Because I don't really, I mean, it's nice. It's a nice product, but it's a $200 piece of foam. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just wondering if the $30 piece of foam would just be like basically the same fucking thing. <laughs> you know what? We should we should try that. Uh, yeah. I might. Oh no! Do I have it? Do an A B test. Yeah, I was gonna say my buddy had left his TLM uh, forty nine with me. I don't know if I still have it or I gave it back. So that would be like a true A B. Oh, that yeah. Been cool. I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Dude, see, and then you still do the band work, right? You still have bands coming in. Maybe not at this time, but it's like still an option. I have um I have bands like every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Um I'm finishing up some projects that were just left like um we just kind of left yeah, we just kind of like left things hanging uh in you know around March. Mm-hmm. I just we didn't we didn't know it was going to happen basically. Right, right. Um so we just left things hanging and I have I have bands that you know if you ha- if you sit on a project for so long you start to maybe maybe some of the players are like finding new voicings or finding yeah. new like new little like backup vocals to pepper in there and stuff like that and it's like well this is not what they're recording you know it's like if there's so much time yeah yeah but so I'm finding that happening now is that uh, some of my projects that were hanging from before the lockdown um they're like adding a new song like one of they're not releasing these and right. they're like one, one band is going to come in and record a whole new song yeah um uh, another band is going to redo all their vocals oh, you know wow. they're just they're, they're they're taking this opportunity hey that's fine by me i charge hourly yeah yeah works for <laughs> It works well for you, but like I've I've right. had I've had like the conversation come up, like hey, uh, oh man, maybe we should like redo this and redo that. I'm like, I think you guys are like in a space where you've been a- away from it for so long that you're just like kind of trying to reinvent this thing. I think we're doing a good job as of now, and yeah. I try I try not because honestly, again. It, I think you know what I figured it out. I think I've figured out my life. I just want to have as much fun as possible. Yes. <laughs> so yes. If, if I have to re-record a song, it's not very fun for me. <laughs> right. Fair. <laughs> oh, that's man. fair. See, so you're doing, dude. You're you're doing a lot of things. You're doing the the AV stuff. You're doing the narrator stuff. You're doing essay, essay, essay e. <laughs> And you're doing your band stuff, dude. You're doing great things, man. I wanna, I wanna, I, I can't wait till you actually become a official teacher at SAE. Me and you would just destroy that place. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, I, to be honest with you, like I, like I say, I, I applaud your extreme work ethic, man. Because I don't know if I, I don't know if I can do <laughs> a full time job like you, and then do full night like four days a night of night class you understand that people i tell about you you understand that you are nuts right i hope you know that you're just (laughs) just like my parents told me yeah (laughs) you're like you're the same level of workaholic that i that i was maybe five years ago that i'm trying to get back to that at the same time i know i burn out so hard (laughs) like i appreciate it dude i don't know what it is but uh yeah, it is. It is. It is a little nutty. I mean, I mean, I feel fine, but like from the outside, I can see how people think that dude's on cocaine or something. Like, <sighs> not me. I'm. 
<laughs> I'm clean, but like here I'll pee, oh, yeah, I'll no. pee right now. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> um, no, no, it's it's definitely nutty, but like, uh, dude, I I really don't think it's that as crazy as uh, it's it seems. I really don't think so. Right, right. I think once you, especially once you get into like a groove. So like, I already know I'm not doing anything between. 8 a.m. and 11 p.m. Monday to Thursday. Like, I, I my like that's already set. I don't have to th- worry about. Oh, I need to bounce out a mit. No, no, I'm not doing anything. That, like, oh, but you got to do that vocal. No, 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 no. Oh, but you wanted to revise the bass. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, let's just redo the drums on just this one song. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Now, even worse, can we just redo a drum fill from that? Yeah, yeah. Oh no, that's my favorite. That's my favorite. That's what I was like, well, guess guess who's gonna chippity chop together a fucking fill for you, my friend? Uh oh. Yes, you've done that. I've heard you do that. That's brilliant. Skin get a ding 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 ding. Oh. Oh man, oh. no. But I, I I also think one of the reasons why. Uh, Yeah, dude, it's just like, I think this pandemic opened up a whole set of like hours, like not commuting, I found very difficult to adjust to when it first hit, like not commuting, having that extra hour. But then you realize that not only is commuting taking up time, it's taking up energy and resources in your just physically and mentally. And I actually got pretty... I mean, I got kind of stressed out, a little anxiety ridden when I had all this extra energy and stuff. I'm like, this is not good. I'm, I'm, I'm going to like, I'm going to get so, I'm going to go crazy and get really depressed if I just don't do something. So I think that has something to do with it too. It's like commuting time is more than just, oh, it's 40 minutes to get to work. No, there's a lot more energy than you think going into that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I, I mean, commuting. Wow, what is that? Yeah, what is that? Right. We gotta start going back to the school now. I uh, I'm starting. I, I've been in like once a week for the last few weeks, and I think they're trying to do twice a week next mod, which I'm fine with. I prefer in person, to be honest. I don't like like the Zoom classes. Espe- Dude, one of the first things when the kids come into my class, I say kids. Some of them are older than me. Right, when right. Students, <laughs> when, when the students come into my class, if I like, it's like you guys got to turn your cameras on. Like I, I got to see something. Like we got to interact. Wow, John, oh, uh, that's that's not the case. Uh, not the case in ours, unfortunately. And I understand. I also, dude, I'm on Zoom. Like my full time job, I'm on Zoom meetings all day. Yeah. So I'm not necessarily. I don't really go on camera that often. Right. Um. I'm actually the, the, I'm actually like behind the scenes anyway. Like I'm an AV guy. Like on the Zoom meeting, I'm always just behind the scenes. So I keep that same mentality. Right. Um. When I'm there, even with John as a TA, but I took over his class. I just came on like, because nobody else is coming on. I was like, I'm not gonna like force people, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, I came on once. I'm like, hi, I'm a real hu- human. <laughs> you know, pff, turned it back off. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't. I don't um, force anybody. Look, obviously, people are in their homes. Some of them might be like staying with their family. They don't want to have like family members walking past them in the background. Totally get that. But if you're in your room and dude, I just try to like look. Can we like get some interaction going, something so that we can yeah make this experience what you guys paid it paid for it right. to be. <laughs> right, 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 right. Dude, no, it's funny. The people who came into my mod. The first time they even saw and talked to each other was in my mod. How fucking crazy is that? That is, yeah. <laughs> like, one of them was like, bro, I thought you were black for this whole time. Like, oh, no, I thought you were white this whole time. That's what he said. It's like, Tim, oh, my God, is that you? I thought you were white this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. Come on. <laughs> you got to kind of know your peers, right? That's funny. I think a lot of people don't realize that this is actually how you move up. Like, you know, me and you are peers. So, like, we kind of just help each other out and we grow and grow yeah. side by side. It's not like, it's not like you know, 
yeah, I, I don't think people get that. Like, we you have to be in touch with your peers and like help each other out and be supportive and, you know, you know, go to their businesses, come on their podcasts. Like, we all gotta like kind of move up that way. I think that's the way to do it. So, absolutely, man. It's fucking wild, man. Hmm. Crazy. And now you're in a good space, like comfortable happy ish for the most part i'm doing great man i'm you know i suppose i i do wish i could be you know yeah i wish i had that like extra like piece of motivation i need to get some i need to get a recording project that i'm involved with Mm -hmm. just like you i think that'll i think that'll help me Something that you know, you're invested in, like yeah, yeah, something that I may be playing on in some way, or that I've co-written, or like something, you know, because I definitely record a lot of other people's stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then being that my band hasn't gotten together very often right. in this past like six months, it's kind of hard on me. Yeah. So I want to keep I want to keep the spirit alive, you know. Bro, you are talented. You're a great engineer. You're a great narrator. Thanks, so it's like you can jump into anything you want and put in your two cents or more than two cents and feel invested. You can totally do that. And I definitely hope you do. I really hope you start that podcast. I would love Thanks, that. <laughs> you know what? I think you're inspiring me to do so. Bro, how, dude, it's easy. You know? Did you know how easy it was to just turn on my laptop, send you a link? record the only hard part okay if we're talking about you know work or whatever the only work is that i now have to take the video sync up the audio then cut out all the snippets which takes time i understand that but like as far as just recording it dude it's easy you just open it up boom yeah it's a cinch i mean whenever you and i get together we can keep keep going on and on anyway so it's (laughs) the content builds itself my friend exactly and if you did that for like the Brooklyn scene or like the, I, I've thought about doing it for like, you know, all the guys in the Brooklyn scene, you know, but like, it's, it's just not my space. Engineering is definitely my, my number one space. So yeah, I think someone like you, who's definitely more in touch with that scene than me, like that would be so awesome. So awesome. I would watch that. I th- hey, it, thank you for the, thank you for the ideas. Cause I, you know. It's something we've been floating around, Knuckle Down Records. That's the independent punk rock record label I started with my friend Larry. And that's actually something that I've tossed around there. But I might as well just sit right here with this setup and uh, do what I'm doing with you. And then maybe yes. just like talk to some bands, Dude. wherever they may be. Yes. Doesn't have to be fancy. Just has to be content. Just, just has to be supportive of the of the people around. That's it. it. Look, look at this. This is not fancy. Okay, I'm wearing a shirt because I have a session later, not because I wouldn't do this. For- <laughs> I, matter of fact, I love you. I love that you said that because I just got a phone call before. I don't want to. I don't want to interrupt what you're saying. <laughs> That's that is the fun. That is the fun part of a. Uh, I have a. Uh, just a consultation, like. Here, you want to check it out? Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the website doesn't website doesn't suffice, I guess. All right. Yeah, just like the resume doesn't suffice. It's life, right? baby. It's life. Right. Cool. Well, I mean, oh, look, man. where where can people find you? You're uh, Knuckle Down Records, if and only if productions, mm-hmm. right? Uh, if if and only if dot nyc. That's my website. Um, if and only if nyc at if and only if nyc is my Instagram handle. Uh, my band is Bedpan Fight, Knuckle Down Records, and just put .com at the end of any of those. <laughs> Perfect, dude. Well, look, and, I appreciate yeah. you being on, man. And, like, you are you are not only one of the funniest people that I know on the scene, but, like, you're, like, you're just inspiring. Like, you definitely did so much over these last few years, and it's awesome to just Thanks, see, man. You, see you keep moving. I, I, just, I just want you to stay positive. I just want you to stay in like find that good mental space absolutely that's actually probably the most important thing honestly it's it's what keeps us going it's what keeps us like i want to keep this drive alive let's you know for sure i think i'll help you with that i'll throw content at you every day until you (laughs) thank you please do 
well, let's see what I can make of this. Uh, I'll I'll set it up. You know, maybe I won't have such a, a you know a shithole of a <laughs> you know of a looking you know situation over here. Dude, I apologize. Do it, do it. I'll I'll do. I'll gladly be a guest on that show. I will gladly watch it. I'll gladly Fantastic. promote it. <laughs> Fantastic. Cool. All Love right, you, dude.